<laughs> Call the meeting to order the Kingston Springs Regional Planning Commission, December 14th. Uh, roll call of voting members. Keith Allgood? Present. Donna Boggs? Absent. Tony Campbell? Here. Gary Corlew? Absent. Tom Cullen? Here. Tony Gross? Here. Leanne Ferguson? Here. Mike Patno, that's me. Chuck Slater is absent. Non-voting staff, we have Sharon Armstrong. Present. John Lawless. Here. And Jennifer No. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, you have the November 9th minutes. Do we have a motion to approve them? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So the November 9th minutes are approved. And you also have in front of you the December 14th uh, Planning Commission agenda. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So the agenda is approved. <clears throat> the first item is under old business is the Thornton's Project, Liven Hills Road signage proposal. So who is going to talk about that? Okay, Sharon? Very briefly. Um, we had our last project meeting last week at uh, Jennifer Noe's office to discuss signs. We've done a great deal of research. Two of the signs that are located on the property are grandfathered. They were existing. Um, so those have been approved. They have fallen actually below the signage that was there before. We've reviewed all of their construction plans, grading plans, utility plans. So this is their final submission, the final approval. Uh, to begin construction. There will be two outstanding items they need to provide them to be the deed once they acquire the property. And secondarily, they will need to apply for permits to move forward. And so other than that, the Planning Commission is free to uh, consider approval of final plans. Okay, and here it says the signage proposal. Was there anything in particular about the signage proposal that that you just went over it, it's all right. The signage we're all in compliance. The signage okay. is in the package, it's okay. often assessed. It actually falls below the grandfather's size. Okay, I got you. I got you. Too. All right, okay, thank yeah, you. If, if everyone will, will recall, there was the huge McDonald's sign, right? And then a lot of extensive research and before that, it was uh, Stuckey's, mm -hmm. and that sign actually pre existed the incorporation of Kingston's Springs. Okay, and the McDonald's sign. No, it was Stuckey's was Stuckey's before that, before McDonald's. All right. That and the signage Barnard. that was allowed for the right. shopping center. McDonald's, there's a bar. Uh, yeah, and it was in the Stuckey's building. Yeah. Yeah. As existing, non-conforming, and grandfather. Okay. They fell below that with their final system. Okay, I got you now. I only had to hear it twice. I <laughs> <laughs> may. So, okay. Um, so do we have a motion on the Thornton's Project signage proposal? Motion to Okay. So a motion to approve this. Do we have a second? Second. Is there any discussion or question on this? I guess I, I would like to ask the, the planner. You're comfortable with everything now. We've I am. We've gone okay. through a lot. There's a lot of, <clears throat> I won't say opposition within the community, but I want to make sure that we dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's, but you're we very... We have reviewed um, everything from their landscape to their lighting to their construction plans to their site plan. Everything has been reviewed. I am comfortable. Um, there was a great deal of appellate case law to support the non grandfathered signage. Um, that's come up a lot. It didn't used to extend the signage, but it does now. Teleport address the issue in Williamson County and several other counties across the state. So I am comfortable that they are ready to go and proceed with their final plan set. They updated their site plan to include the two signs that were grandfathered in. Um, their final grading and other plans, landscape, lighting, everything falls within the permit. The only two variances from the regulations were the signage for non conforming and grandfathered and their lighting scheme fell within, as you know, they were allowed secondary access to separate car travel from truck travel for safety reasons. Uh, TDOT weighed in on that, so that was the only two things that didn't meet your regulations. All right, thank you. 
One quick question. Certainly. Uh, in driving by Mapco last night, I noticed that the lighting underneath their canopies is very bright. How does that number compare with this? Theirs has substantially more signage display area. That was because of the grandfathering and the nonconformity of the site. Um, I might suggest to reduce signage if that's your goal as a planning commissioner in this town. And once a business closes, you need to take the steps necessary to declare that site abandoned. Once it's abandoned, the grandfathering for the signage as well as the lot goes away. That did not happen in this case. The MAPCO site's never been abandoned. It just burned down. <laughs> huh? Any other questions? Comments? Okay. So on the Thornton's Project, Lyman Hills Road, signage proposal, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Okay. So we recommend approval on that. Gee, we're going to miss you all coming every <laughs> Every second Thursday of the month. Yeah, I, I figured you would. So I figured I'd uh, just come up here and say just thank you to the staff that have been great to work with, and we're excited about moving forward with the project tonight. Uh, we're going to kick off our final architectural plans, final civil plans, hopefully get those knocked out in the next 30, 45 days, get them in for permit, and then start in the spring. That's the goal. Well, very good. Okay, thank I'll you. Thank you all for your, uh, your effort on this. Well, I think okay. I've told you I'm not particularly a fan of building another service station up there, but you guys have been very professional. You've done really a good job of, of presenting to this body. So. Thank you. I hope to see you at the, the grand opening now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, if I'm still alive. <laughs> Thanks again. You guys, if, if you want to stay, you can, but you don't have to. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, next item is new business. Resubdivision of commercial lots, West Kingston Springs Road, Carl Francis. You have in front of you a proposed resubdivision of lots four and five of Indian Point subdivision. It's this drawing. The purpose of this resubdivision in flat is to create an access that complies with city regulations to the lot behind. And to refresh everyone's memory, the lot that falls behind is the second of the code overlay for the city commission to vote on next week. So with this, this meets the regulations for an access road to the lot behind where this drawing, which is in no way anything other than a concept, um, this particular drawing does not meet any of the requirements for submission of the site plan. It is a general plan concept. So to, be, to make sure that the commission, planning commission is clear, this is the only item that you will be asked to vote on tonight. This item will not be voted on tonight. So the request is approval of a resubdivision of two existing lots to create an access throughway to the lot behind where this concept well. I mean, but those those two lots are zoned commercial. They are. Will they require rezoning at some point, or how's that going to be done? Um, I, I don't know. I can't answer that question. The document that's submitted as a concept, I'm assuming for the purposes of discussion only, does not contain sufficient information to determine whether this will be um, rezoned or not. Well, I, I notice I'm curious about right-of-ways on there, Carl. Where does the sewer go? And is it across Are the you front open of the discussion? it? I mean, yeah. You know. uh, the key thing is, of course, we had the original, we had the original joint access easements that were put in across all five lots. Right. And the water, of course, is on the other side of the street, but we've right. already got the taps over there. Right. And then the sewer, actually, the, there'll be a sewer manhole there that connects up. We put that in originally before right. the road was done. So all we're asking for is just to basically decrease the size of lot four and five Indian Point to allow the 50-foot ingress and egress to serve the 15 acres. But we're not asking for rezoning on the commercial lots. We want them to stay as they are, of course. Well, I didn't know. Yeah. And then I had a question for Ms. Sharon there. I just want to make sure before we do this, and y'all vote and approve it, we won't, you know, of course, when you originally let us, or you were here, when we originally did Indian Point, we were granted three 
ingress and egress points, one in front of the bank, one in front of Subway, the doctor's building, and one down here. So with this remaining a private road, we'll still be able to access into here. Because we can't create another based on the guidelines that yeah, handed to us 15 years ago. We, they wouldn't let us access Kingston Spring Road any other place. So I'm asking you, would that still allow us to? In order to answer that question, Mr. Francis, a couple of things would come to mind. One, you would have to share the easement. Right. It would have to be shared with all of the properties as a dedicated easement. It will have to be constructed to city standards. When you serve more than one lot right. with an easement, it has to be bought up to the city standards. Right. They even though it remains private. That is correct. Okay. Even though it's private, even though they don't maintain it, even though it will never be dedicated to right. them or it may in the future, it still has to meet the standards because it serves more than one lot. If these lots sell off, the commercial lots on either side, if the property behind this development develop, then this easement has to meet the level of a public street in okay. order for that. Well, we intend for that anyway because we've got the, the water district has already informed me they want me to run the water line dead down the center of the road because we're, they're requiring us to use duct line. Down the, the center of the road? Yes. Can they uh, require that? That's what they said. That's, I don't care what they said. A great deal of issue. Well, I mean, that's what they, see, the roads into uh, Indian Point, I asked the same question. They said because they're such limited with the concept plan that we've submitted with the setbacks of the proposed units here, they want it to go down the road. And that's, well, it's, I haven't, I mean, that's nothing, it's not set in stone yet with them, but this is what, when I had a pre meeting. Well, if I'm still here, I'm going to argue against that. Okay. We've, we've fought and fought with them over their water lines under our road. Right where they refused to fix the road when they turned or tear it up, or they inadequate in what they do. So, Well, our plan is to concrete all of the roads, because I'm a fan of concrete rather than pavement, and so I wouldn't want a water line under a concrete road, because if you're, if you're going perpendicular to the road, you can saw out a trough yeah. and patch it back. But if you're running parallel with the road, you're asking for trouble. Well, our experience is they haven't been very good at patching the ones across it. So. Well, that's, you know. As an observation, the regulations that reside in your zoning ordinance and in your subdivision ordinance would prohibit the location of the water line under the road. <coughs> I hope so. The reason for the 50 foot access is water on one side of the road, sewer on the other side of the road. You don't allow them to run that under the pavement because it becomes a maintenance issue for the okay. city if there's a leak. Yes. So that would be well, that makes sense. Yeah. That would be something that if the utility were making that request, then I would send out a letter as a zoning administrator telling them that's absolutely not going to happen. Okay. Not under the regulations. Well, see, logically, the water comes here and would come up this side, if you're thinking about it the way I do. And then the sewer, uh, when Clint and I last talked, where the tap is for lot five, that's what connects up to the main sewer line across the street. And we were going to take that out and put a manhole there for. Indian point to drain in right. Well, at the, for the purposes of the meeting tonight, they're only granting or considering granting an access easement. We're not down the road for yeah, this project right. yet. But my advice to you would be to go back to the utility and tell them that it's absolutely not available to construct the road with a road line. Okay. Well, let me go back to my original question to you, Mr. <laughs> I want to make sure that we, if it, of course, that's going to be a private road. That when we do get somebody to lease, of course, we're not going to sell the lots. We're going to um, maintain them just like we did Big Street for lease purposes. But I want to make sure that we can come in here and access the two commercial lots. Well, again, as long as it's constructed to see standards, that's okay. the purpose of the okay. standard access easement. Uh, it serves more than one lot. It has to be constructed to that standard. It will have to be full drill on completion to make sure that the substrate is, is done. But it will have to be vetted and paid. I have another question, Carl, while you're here and standing before us. All of the rock and all you have stored up there, is mm -hmm. that going to be moved out of there? That's for the actual, I've been buying it when I get a deal on it, to put back there on Indian Point. Yeah, that's that all. big the, rock? Do what? The big rock? What you got to remember, I'm going to have some pretty good slopes back there. Tony, there will be some seven and eight foot slopes, especially as you go in to the right and going around where the clubhouse is going to yeah. be. It's going to take a lot of rock to build it up. What about all the trucks up there? Well, they just, most, uh, two of them work for me and the other two don't. Yeah. Well, I've had questions recently about whether they're legal there. 
Well, I don't, you know, they've been there. You know, I know they, they helped me build the property up, and they work, you know, I, they subcontract to me to haul my stuff. So. But, I mean, all the rock that I bought, rock now is about five $600 a load if you're buying it from Rogers or from Vulcan. And when I get a deal on the load, I buy it just to have it there in anticipation of being in the All right. As an observation, Mr. Campbell, and for the rest of the planning commission, before anything is constructed on the rear, we would require an engineer to proctor report for compaction. There's yeah. some notes in a TDAC file that need to be addressed. Well, and there needs to be well, one of the things that I've thought of addressed is the water, storm water. There's going to have to be some kind of facility there to store water. And oh, we've already got the retention yeah. on there that was built originally for the five commercial lot. It's Below at the rear that? Subway. Where? Right there at the rear subway. Well, that doesn't help from that subdivision. Oh, yeah. Well, that's where we intend. That's If you'll look, well, you haven't okay, seen these drawings yet, but that's where he intends for about 80% of the water to go to. All right. Yeah. Well, again, for the purposes of tonight's meeting, we are nowhere near. I understand that. To this, but I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, if this access is approved, then we'll generate a letter asking for certain information on the rear lot um, to make sure that there are no outstanding issues with the Tennessee Department of Environmental Conservation. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so, any other questions for our no, planner? I, I move, let's see, we're resubdivision of commercial lots, and that's to create the Two lots, for the yeah. opportunity for the road through. Right, for the road through the middle, right? Just yeah. for my, my information, what's the zoning for Indy Point going to be? R3 PUD? R3. Uh, it is. It would be, uh, there is a PUD overlay that will be voted on um, at the December meeting and finalized again in January. Um, Mr. Francis will need to submit a plan in compliance with that. Now, these two, these lots are separate lots. I understand that. And that I'm would just be a looking for my own information. For that one, for the rear lot that is a residential zoning, and it would be a residential overlay for that. Two or three? Pardon? R2 or R3? There's, at this time, there is no request for rezoning. Right now, it's R2. So that would have to be submitted as well for any change. I can tell you that from at the lands, the concept that was submitted this strong yeah. does not come wide with our tape. So back to the easement. Uh, if the road was in one of the lots, one of the two lots solely, there would be no, there would be nothing to vote on. It would be be able to make the road. So I'm trying to trying to figure out here. So is there an issue with there, the road being on two different lots? That's the purpose of this particular plan. Right. There would be if someone constructed a, a road right now. Okay. With the lots as they sit, because part of the territory lies on this lot, part of the territory. Correct. So if you were to do it as one sole lot, it would be, it wouldn't have to be voted on. This would just be the remainder of lot four, the remainder of lot five. No, this would be a dedicated easement that would be taken from part of each lot, and it right. becomes, even though it's a private road, it's a throughway and can never right. be closed off. I assume the request is due to utilizing the commercial properties to their utmost. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Do I have a motion uh, regarding this request, which is resubdivision of commercial lots West Kingston Springs Road? It doesn't really say what we're doing here. It just says resubdivision of the lots, but it's for the purpose of an easement, for right? Of yeah, for the purpose of gaining so move. Okay. So we have a motion. Second. All right. Any other discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. So I have one other item here. Um, John, did you want to talk about that statement of interest form you, you discussed at the last couple of meetings? Just or? a reminder that the okay. statement of interest form is due by 1st of January. January, somewhere around January there. or 1st of February? It might be the end of January. I think it's the end of January. I sent mine the other day. Thank you for Okay, very good. And if you need, anybody needs paper copies, let me know. Um, I sent you an email. With Did they let you send a paper copy anymore? Oh, yeah. I, I just got one in the mail today. Yeah. 
Yeah, I got them out today, too. Yeah. Right? Well, this, 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 I don't well, really I, like it here. They're trying to make everybody do it online. Yeah. Yeah. I submitted mine by paper. Then I got a note two weeks later saying that it didn't exist, and I got a confirmation today in the mail. Yeah, I I have, I've just sent mine. <laughs> Are we other, under other? No, nope. I mean, there's nothing else here. Well, I would like another other. Yeah, I'd like an update on uh, McPherson. We have got the citation. We have sent it to our special administrative hearing officer. He is out of pocket, um, so it will be probably done sometime in the month of February. Did you keep me posted? I bet you'll laugh. Huh? I'm sure you'll laugh. <laughs> 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 now, he goes out of town for the holidays. I know him well. <clears throat> okay, anything else before we adjourn? Okay. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. I just wanted to ask about this overlay you were talking about. Can you explain that just briefly? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to tell you, Carl. <laughs> it, it's not a particular track of conversation. Um, I'll be happy to explain it after the meeting. I'm sure <laughs> okay. <you're> <laughs> uh, it is basically an overlay that provides flexibility for both the developer and for the planning commission. It also has um, a number of improved um, scenarios for development of properties. Okay. Um, as an example, one was done in Ashland City for Ron Wilkinson's property um, on Highway 12. It allows a it allowed a blended commercial residential studio Right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. Thank you.